Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We are joined today by the Medical Officer of Health at the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey, and the Mayor of London, Ed Holder. We'd like to welcome the media who are in attendance this afternoon as well. And just a quick reminder that when you do submit your questions using the question and answer form here on Microsoft Teams, to please indicate your name and media outlet as well as who your question is directed to. We already have a couple of questions in the queue, so if you'd like to get those in, maybe you haven't asked a question before, just hover your mouse over the middle of the screen and you'll see the toolbar come up and the question and answer forum is the one that has the question marks on it. So we'll watch for those questions to come in. And I welcome this afternoon also to those who are joining us on Rogers Television as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, listeners on Global News Radio, AM 980 CFPL, and those who are tuning in on the CTV London website. Let's get to the opening statements right away, and we'll begin this afternoon with Dr. Chris Mackey. Thanks very much, Dan. Uh, on the numbers fronts, we're seeing continued high rates of uh, spread of COVID-19, both at the provincial level, one, uh, 841 cases today, and at the local level, we're back in double digits with 11 new cases today. Fortunately, no new deaths here, uh, but there were nine across the province today. Uh, the uh, Obviously, we've been spending a lot of time hearing uh, comments on, on the uh, local orders that are being used to reduce risk in uh, sports facilities in particular, uh, as well as restaurants and personal service settings uh, over the last 24 hours since those re were released. Uh, at this point, a couple of things have become clear. Uh, first of all, there may be an opportunity to tweak the orders prior to their uh, coming into effect at midnight on Friday that uh, has a minor impact in terms of risk or no impact in terms of increasing risk and uh, a major impact in terms of improving the opportunity for sports uh, organizations in particular to operate. So we've been having a number of conversations with leaders in uh, sporting organizations across London and Middlesex, and we'll continue to do so up to uh, Friday. Uh, and uh, sort of uh, late Friday afternoon, we'll make a final determination about any adjustments that we'll be making uh, to the orders before they come into place. Uh, the, so so there are there is a potential, I think, for some uh, minor adjustments that will uh, improve the opportunity to, to uh, play sports and also um, in, uh, have a um, minimal impact on the risk level. Uh, <coughs> the other thing that's become very clear is that uh, I think many people were unaware of the provincial rules that are already in place under the emergency protections. The Ontario Regulation 364-20 uh, is the regulation that opens up Ontario to stage three and uh, there are some, uh, there's a whole section of that regulation that, uh, that limits activities within sports facilities and fitness facilities. And uh, that section includes, for example, you know, games cannot be played unless they can be played uh, without any contact between players. Uh, individual sports cannot be, uh, cannot be uh, competed in or, or trained in unless uh, you're able to compete, keep two meters apart from other individuals. Uh, and uh, what's clear from many of the comments and questions we've had uh, related to the local orders is that uh, people were, some people were unaware of or uh, uh, potentially not complying with those components of the provincial stage three order uh, regulation around fitness facilities. So we've got a couple of things we need to do. We need to keep having those conversations with uh, folks that are interested in preserving and strengthening sports. And we also have to increase the awareness around the existing regulations that are in place across Ontario in stage three, uh, which uh, we can't change locally and also are important. Uh, so, so those are the conversations that we're having right now. Um, we will, uh, again, keep having those conversations and look to have more uh, in terms of any potential changes uh, and announcements on uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, happy to have, uh, we're happy to have the mayor here as well today and uh, looking forward to his comments. Well, thank you, Dr. Mackey, and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start by uh, 
thanking him for his leadership and particularly his willingness to listen and collaborate with stakeholders to get us to the right place. No one and absolutely no one wants to impact lives or livelihoods either as a result of the virus itself or COVID related restrictions. That's essentially what, what uh, we're trying to balance, protecting the health and safety of Londoners, which is foremost, while doing so in a manner that has minimal impact on our day to day lives and favorite activities. I know firsthand Dr. Mackey's focus on a commitment to safe physical activity as a positive influence on a child's mental and physical well being. I think his comments here this afternoon are a reflection of that commitment. Well, look, these are exceptionally difficult, confusing, and frustrating times. Everyone's trying to adjust as best they can, and everyone is doing the best they can. We recognize and appreciate that. We all want what's best for London. And we're trying to strike the right balance, and I think together we'll get there. As you know, other communities, Ontario, Toronto, Ottawa, Peel, and York regions were recently put back into a modified stage two set of restriction, and that includes no indoor youth sporting activity of any kind, a full closure of all gyms and exercise facilities, no movie theaters and no indoor dining at any restaurants. This is the last thing anyone want, wants for London Middlesex, and that is not what the Medical Health Officer of Health's order entails for London. One of our primary objectives, objectives is to avoid that uh, super spreader uh, event as witnessed in Hamilton earlier this month. They've now seen dozens of cases linked to a single spin class resulting in daily counts of 30 and 40 persons per day. Prior to that incident, Hamilton's daily case count was almost identical to ours in London. But as a result of that single super spreader event, Hamilton could very easily find itself thrown back into modified stage two lockdown. They, neither they nor us, want that. And that's what our medical officer of health is trying to avoid here in London by being proactive and with a minimal disruption to our day-to-day -day lives. And for that, on behalf of London and Londoners, uh, I'm exceptionally appreciative. So we're doing the best we can, and uh, we ask for our community's uh, tolerance and patience. We work to get it right. And, uh, and I think uh, as a result of uh, the comments uh, that you've heard and will hear through this press conference and as we go forward, are an indication of that intent. So those are my comments for the moment. Uh, and Dan, I'll, I'll uh, put it back to you, please. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder. And thank you, Dr. Mackey, for your opening statements this afternoon. Well, we do have some questions already in line. And again, if you are uh, wanting to ask a question, you can submit it using the question and answer form here in Microsoft Teams. Just indicate your name, and your media outlet, and again, who your question is directed to. Uh, Dr. Mackey, uh, we've got some questions for you right away from Steve Young at CTV London and News Talk 1290 CJBK. Uh, Dr. Mackey, there's lots of confusion surrounding indoor sports, including hockey and soccer. The restrictions from the province and the adjustments from the health unit have sparked a lot of questions that we're hoping you can address. So here are several questions, Dr. Mackey. How many players can be on the ice at one time or for that matter on the soccer field? How many people can be in the facilities at one time and how can drills take place? Thanks, Dan. So uh, the regulation has uh, 10 people uh, each, you know, you potentially uh, two groups of 10 at either end of a rink uh, if there's adequate separation between them. Uh, but, you know, that's one of the questions that we're looking at closely uh, and trying to sort out with our uh, friends and partners who operate uh, hockey leagues, whether we can tweak those numbers to make them uh, a bit more livable from the hockey perspective and also still safe from the perspective of the people participating. Uh, so I'll get, sorry, the other second part was around uh, uh, on the soccer field. Yeah, the, the yes. same situation, right? If you've got adequate separation you could have more than one group of 10 on a soccer field uh, in terms of the total in the facilities uh, that wouldn't change we're talking about playing surfaces gyms that sort of thing not um, a figure and a total facility and then on the question of the how can drills take place uh, there are lots of different ways to uh, adjust drills to make them uh, safer we've already seen that and from the conversations you had today with uh, folks in the hockey and soccer worlds, there are already lots of ways uh, that those drills have been adjusted already uh, to make them much safer. So confident that uh, those organizations will continue 
to uh, put safety first and, and ensure that their drills are, uh, are as safe as possible. All right, thank you, Dr. Mackey. And a follow-up question from Steve Young. Uh, Dr. Mackey, this has obvious impacts on local youth sports. What is your message to parents who may be concerned about the mental health of their children? Thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing the issue of mental health into the conversation. And I would thank the uh, mayor for that as well. I know that he highlighted that in his introductory comments a moment ago. Mental health is an incredibly important uh, reason why we keep physically active. I think many of us who were confined early on in the pandemic to staying at home for most of the time, uh, most of the days, uh, really noticed some of the impacts on mental health. And it was when you know spring started and we, we were really starting to encourage people to go outdoors uh, for those mental health reasons. It really brought it to, to the front of people's minds how significantly the, the earlier lockdowns had really impacted mental health. You know, many of the people that reached out in response to the announcement of the orders have uh, identified the mental health aspects um, and the mental health benefits, for example, for their children. Uh, I think that that's a really important part of why we're looking at this closely uh, to see if we can get it to a very safe place that still allows sports to continue. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Uh, let's move on to the next question, and it comes from Hope Mahood at the Western Gazette. And Dr. Mackey, I think this is for you. Uh, have there been any new cases or updates from the London Hall outbreak? Uh, so we haven't had any new cases associated with that outbreak. Uh, we do continue to see cases among Western students, but nothing at this point uh, that is indicating outbreak levels of activity. Thank you very much. Uh, next question, uh, we're going to move down. Jane Sims from the London Free Press asked, Dr. Mackey, there were 11 cases reported, uh, my computer is not, there we go, reported in Middlesex, London today. Were any of the cases connected to recreational activities? Uh, thanks for the question, Jane. Most of the activities that uh, that we're go that we're seeing in terms of the cases today are related to um, household contacts. So we are starting to see that Thanksgiving Day bump. Uh, you know that's why our case counts are you know in double digits, even though the number of tests at the assessment centers, anyways, has really dropped in the community uh, down to you know. Uh, about 30% off from the peak. Uh, still huge numbers of tests in the long-term care facilities because of the mandatory screening there. So uh, we we haven't seen cases uh, linked with uh, sports, but we, it's also not something that we ask every case about. So it's quite possible that this has occurred, uh, but it hasn't just just hasn't been uh, picked up in our in our numbers. Uh, we also know that this is happening in other places. We are seeing sport related cases uh, and spread within sports in neighboring jurisdictions uh, across Ontario. So uh, the fact that uh, you know it is happening elsewhere is a strong indication that it could happen here, uh, which is why we're acting now to prevent that sort of spread. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Uh, if you do have some questions, we are getting to the end. So if you uh, were waiting for the opportunity, now would be a good time to submit your questions. Dr. Mackey, a question here from Matthew Trevithick at Global News Radio AM 980 CFPL. Matthew asks, Dr. Mackey, with possible tweaks coming to the orders announced yesterday, can you speak to what the consultation process was like with local organizations in defining them? And by defining them, I think the tweaks, specifically relating to arenas and indoor sporting facilities. Yeah, so we had a number of conversations with folks that are involved in sports. Uh, you know, Middlesex London Health Unit is a pretty active community, so all of us have some exposure, uh, but uh, certainly had some connections outside of um, our organization as well. We haven't put in place a, a um, you know, a robust, extensive consultation process. I'll just remind everyone that we are in the midst of a pandemic and we're using our emergency response protocols. Uh, you know, on, on a normal day, we would love to uh, have the chance to speak to and hear from anyone on any, any major ever, uh, any major policy change. Uh, we're operating in a in a situation where, you know, delays uh, literally can lead to 
uh, illness and death in our community. And so uh, that's why you wouldn't have seen, you know, this sort of extensive consultation process that uh, the London plan had, for example, with thousands of people giving input. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. And a follow up from Matthew Trevithick. Dr. Mackey, is the health unit noticing any new trends regarding who is testing positive for the virus and how people are becoming infected? I would say month over month, we're we're slight, seeing slightly more, uh, slightly older uh, average cases, but we still have a lot of spread among young people in their uh, 20s in particular and 30s as well. Uh, so uh, it's not a really dramatic change. The biggest change, I mean, this time last month, uh, Western University was really driving the majority of cases in the area. And uh, I'd say they're down to, you know, 10 to 20% of cases. That's ballpark. It's not um, an exact figure, but it's uh, much less of a factor right now. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. And uh, gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the questions for this afternoon. So Mayor Holder, thank you very much for your time, your insights. Dr. Mackey, thank you also for your information this afternoon. And thank you for joining us. Our next virtual media briefing is scheduled for Monday afternoon at two o'clock, but uh, stay close to your emails and uh, we will keep you apprised of situations as they develop. So for now, we'll see you on Monday afternoon at two o'clock. Have a great rest of your afternoon.